Sarah Rector was often referred to as the richest colored girl in the world in the early 20th century. Born in 1902, she was a member of the Muskegee Creek Nation in Oklahoma. Following the Civil War, Rector's parents, who were formerly enslaved by Creek tribe members, were entitled to land allotments under the Dawes Allotment Act of 1887. As a result of this act, hundreds of black children, or the so-called Creek Freedmen Miners, were each granted 160 acres of land as Indian Territory integrated with Oklahoma Territory to form the state of Oklahoma in 1907. The parcel allotted to Sarah Rector was located in Glenpool, 60 miles from where she and her family lived. It was considered inferior soil as better land was reserved for white settlers and members of the tribe. The land given to them required an annual tax of $30 which was becoming a burden for her father. He petitioned the court to sell the land, but the petition was denied. Sarah's father then leased the land to the Standard Oil Company, and in 1913, an independent oil driller, B.B. Jones, drilled a well on the property, which produced a gusher that began to bring in 2,500 barrels of oil a day. Sarah began to receive a daily income of $300 from this strike which equates to about $7,000 a day today. Over time, her popularity began to bloom as her wealth increased. Sarah received numerous requests for loans, money gifts, and even marriage proposals from four Germans even though she was just 12 years old. At the time, a law required Native Americans, black adults, and children who were citizens of Indian territory with significant property and money to be assigned a well-respected white guardian. As a result, Sarah's guardianship switched from her parents to a white man named T.J. Porter. Concerned with her well-being and her white financial guardian, early NAACP leaders fought to protect Sarah and her fortune as these so-called white guardians were nefarious in their dealings with assigned black subordinates. In 1914, the Chicago Defender published an article claiming that her estate was being mismanaged by grafters and her so-called ignorant parents, and that she was uneducated, dressed in rags, and that she lived in an unsanitary shanty environment. National African American leaders such as Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois became increasingly concerned about her welfare. Of course, none of the allegations were true as Sarah and her siblings went to school in Taft, an all-black town, and they lived in a modern five-room cottage and they owned an automobile. That same year, Sarah enrolled in the Children's House, a boarding school for teenagers at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Everything changed for Sarah, even her race apparently, as her wealth prompted the Oklahoma legislator to declare Sarah to be a white person so that she would be allowed to travel in first-class accommodations on the railroad. By age 18, Sarah was estimated to be worth $1 million, which equates to about $11 million today. She owned stocks and bonds, a boarding house, a bakery and restaurant in Muskegee, Oklahoma, and 2,000 acres of land. She eventually left Tuskegee with her family and moved to Kansas City, Missouri, where she bought a very elaborate home that still stands today, known as the Rector House. In 1922, she married Kenneth Campbell, the second African-American to own an auto dealership, and together they became African-American royalty. The couple had three sons, drove expensive cars, and entertained elites like Joe Lewis, Duke Ellington, and Count Bassey at their expensive home. Sarah lived a comfortable life and enjoyed her wealth. She dressed really well and made sure to get the finest clothing. One noteworthy deed of hers is instructing her driver to drive the kids in the neighborhood to school. Unfortunately, this all came to an end as Sarah lost a lot of her wealth during the Great Depression, as did many Americans in general. Upon her death, at the age of 65, she only managed to hold on to some working oil wells and real estate holdings.